welcome to another episode. Today I'm coming to you from SeaWorld, one of my favorite places. Why is it one of my favorite places? Not just the rides. They're also big into animal rescue. So when you see the sign behind me, I'm down here now at the Animal Rescue Center and I want to show you around. So being a teacher here in Florida, another reason why I really like SeaWorld is they give free teacher passes. So for us, it's free to come here. So I like to come here as, as often as I can. In terms of animal rescue, quite often we hear about how many manatees they've saved, how many sea turtles they've saved, how many birds they've saved. And they have a sign right up here around the corner, just in front of me here, uh, that displays uh, to, you know, based throughout the year, how many animals they've saved. So we're gonna go over there and check that out right now. All right, I'm up here at the sign. So what it says, so year to date animal rescues, this is early April, and they've rescued 19 manatees, 23 sea turtles, and they have nothing down there for birds. So I'm not sure how often they update this because I'm sure they've rescued some birds already this year, but that's still pretty impressive. So the point of this video is not to focus on the manatees and sea turtles, but on another organism, which I'll get to in a minute. But I do want to say a couple things. SeaWorld here Orlando has the world's largest manatee rescue facility. So from all over the state of Florida, injured uh, manatees, those that need re rehabilitation, come here to SeaWorld and other places, but most come here. Check out the sign. Just a second ago, I said, the focus of this video is not the manatees, the sea turtles, or the birds, but another group of organisms. And these are the cnidarians, or more specifically, stony corals. There's a lot of problems happening here with stony corals, and they've actually got a stony coral rescue center here. And we're walking down into the viewing area uh, for the manatees and sea turtles. We're gonna go, first, we're gonna go into a room where they have Basically, they're growing stony corals, and they're probably in, in clumps, colonies, about the size of a softball. It's really neat. I'll tell you more in a second. So we're down here getting ready to walk into the rehabilitation center, the rescue center for corals, and I want to talk about one disease that's affecting the corals of southern Florida and even the Caribbean right now. It's called the stony coral tissue loss disease. It's a disease that actually we don't know why it's happening, we don't know what's causing it, though we do think it's bacterial, but the, the uh, corals die very rapidly, and it can overtake a, a reef in a matter of weeks to months, depending on the size of it. So what SeaWorld has actually done is that they've gone out to areas that are getting ready to be hit by an event and they collect these corals before the disease hits in areas in pockets where it hasn't hit yet and then and they bring them into tanks and they keep them alive. The idea is this could be a brood stock. It could be something we can grow them bigger and then eventually when the disease has passed through or maybe once we figure out a way to cure the disease if it is bacterial then we can go back out and replant replace these corals back into the environment and then they can continue to grow so you might be asking why do we care about saving the corals well they're an organism they're a life form we should care but also they're important to us uh, and to the ecosystems around the world 25 percent of all marine life are found in the coral reef habitats also, they, they release a massive amount of oxygen gas that we breathe, and they take in a lot of CO2 out of our atmosphere, which is great because that can reduce, well, help to reduce the, the greenhouse effect, which reduces uh, gl global climate change. So we're here in the rescue center, and you can see these large tanks. I don't even know how many they have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, at least ten big tanks, all with corals. There's probably about uh, 350 coral colonies in this facility. And then SeaWorld has an off-site facility where they have like another 450 to 500 colonies. So all of these were collected just before an event came through. 
If SeaWorld hadn't collected them, they would have been all wiped out. Now, besides this particular disease, there are other diseases that are affecting uh, corals. Black band disease, white syndrome. These are also things, even coral bleaching, which we do know is caused by a temperature change. So there's many, many different diseases. And in in, uh, well, what's really interesting is this one here, this tissue loss is something that's brand new. We only discovered it and realized it back around in the mid 2010s or so. And uh, these corals were brought, brought out of the wild, out of reefs in South Florida, into the tanks back in 2019. I did mention that there's other diseases besides this tissue loss disease. Some of them the scientists know what causes them, some they don't. Right now with this one, they don't. Coral bleaching uh, is caused by uh, warm water and the zooxanthellae living within the tissues of the coral is expelled and then the corals are now transparent, hence the coral looks bleached. And if they don't take it back in quickly, the corals die. Uh, there's others that are caused by uh, different uh, genera of bacteria that we do know about. In the, and then there's some like this one that we simply have no idea. I dropped my water bottle. The bottom line, corals are more susceptible to these diseases when they're stressed. So what can we do to reduce the stress on corals? Obviously controlling global climate change, controlling the greenhouse effect is going to be a plus. Getting the temperature of the water into their normal range is going to reduce their stress. Adding pollution to the water, you know, uh, excess nitrates from fertilizer runoff, all of these things add stress to corals. You know, plastics in the ocean uh, can affect corals. We don't even know that how, how bad microplastics could be affecting corals. So these are all things. If we recycle, we're going to reduce the amount of plastics that could get to the ocean. If we reuse our products, that's going to help. For our global climate change and the greenhouse effect, we can drive less, walk more, use our bikes, carpool, uh, things like that. Uh, these are just a, just a few of the things that we could do. I am so excited to be here at this facility. It's so nice that SeaWorld has set it up and has allowed the visitors to come in and see it, seeing what they do to help coral reefs and stony corals. This has just been fantastic. So that's a little bit on what's happening here at SeaWorld. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.